Hello, I want to talk to you about the work that I've done in the last two weeks examining the environmental impact of the proposed um, uh, Arriva Midwest project, which as you will know is, uh, involves digging a large amount of uranium out of the ground in, uh, in, 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 in a mine in Canada uh, and then refining this uranium into, pure, into a yellow cake and exporting the yellow cake for various purposes. I've examined the environmental Im impact report of Arriva, the company that's doing this, and various other documents associated with this case, and come to certain conclusions which I will present to you um, in fairly encapsulated form, because actually we have quite a short amount of time. Uh, if you want to see the main report that I've written, um, it's available and I've sent it. But I want to focus in this short review on the most important aspects of what it is I've found. And some of the things that I will say I think you'll find rather shocking. Um, there's a, a revolution in the science associated with low-level radiation risk, and this is particularly associated with the element uranium, which turns out to have all sorts of properties which were not really um, uh, fully understood for many, many years. Um, there are three main reasons, in my opinion, why this project can't go ahead. The first one is that new scientific discoveries show that the basis on which human exposures to uranium are presently permitted uh, have been undermined by, um, by, by discoveries. I mean, this, this may sound pretty alarming, but actually it is alarming. A lot of research has been done following the uh, um, use of depleted uranium on, on, uh, as a weapon, and as a result of this research we now know that uranium has these peculiar qualities which make it extremely toxic, very genotoxic. Secondly, the Arriva environmental report that I have looked at is in fact um, inadequate. It leaves out a huge load of information that, that, that should be available, uh, and also it's misleading in many ways. And finally, there's no justification for this. The justification, insofar as it has been uh, um, brought out, has to do with global warming, but there are various problems associated with that kind of justification, firstly because it's philosophically um, invalid to use this kind of cost-benefit analysis. It's, it's been overtaken in the last hundred years by human rights issues, and secondly, there's no real discussion of the way in which it might help the planet in terms of global warming, because after all, the operation itself will produce a huge amount of carbon dioxide in Canada, although perhaps there might be some savings in the countries in which this has been uh, uh, exported. First of all, briefly, I'll talk about uranium exposure. Uh, the military use of depleted uranium has fueled significant research effort into uranium radiobiology. Epidemiology and also uh, objective biomarker studies, chromosome assays of various depleted uranium exposed populations, have suggested or shown, in fact, that uranium has very marked genotoxic effects, which are not predicted by its intrinsic radioactivity. And at the same time, Scientific discoveries in radiobiology have raised serious questions about the general safety of employing the current ICRP risk estimates. These are the estimates that all governments use at the moment, um, using those estimates to model internal exposure from radionuclides. That's substances that are inhaled or ingested and operate from inside as exposed to external radiation, which comes from the outside, like atomic bombs and X-rays. Of course, there were already arguments about the ICRP risk model um, as applied to internal radionuclides because the risk model is based on the concept of ad absorbed dose. An absorbed dose is a quality that's associated with energy per unit mass. And of course, uh, the energy per unit mass pr problem is an averaging, is, uh, is an averaging uh, approach and doesn't work for internal radionuclides where all of the energy is, is, uh, is, is given to very local tissues, a very small uh, tissue elements close to say hot particles or elements that are bound to DNA. Therefore, So the ionization density you near know, these what we call anisotropic sources like uranium particles or the dust that's produced by the Areva operation is much higher than the average absorbed dose over the whole body. Uh, and uh, the European Committee on Radiation Risk um, ECRR published a book in 2003 which takes account of these anisotropies. As far as uranium is concerned, and we're dealing with uranium now, there are also new results from laboratory research. Um, 
we, we have seen in many, many papers from various parts of the world that uranium causes genomic and genetic damage in cell cultures at concentrations where there are no significant alpha emissions. That is to say, the concentrations are so low that the intrinsic radioactivity of uranium can't be the cause of these uh, measurable effects. Uranium particles also cause genetic damage in cell culture elements and cause cancer in laboratory animals. Uranium causes anomalous inflammation in lung, kidney, brain, other living tissue in rats, and it causes chromosome damage in, as I said, Gulf War veterans, people where, and, and, in, and in miners in Namibia also. Large amounts of objective evidence of chromosome damage. So now these, these uh, effects are quite puzzling on the basis of the normal uh, radiation risk approach, because uranium is quite a, a, a weakly radioactive substance. Now, these studies are in peer-reviewed literature, but they have been generally ignored by governments and risk agencies. The UK Royal Society, <coughs> the, the, ultimate, uh, the ultimate committee, if you like, uh, in, in terms of discussing these sorts of effects, found that uh, uranium um, was not a very powerful mutagen for some reason. This was an error. This was an error. They, they employed the ICRP risk model, the model that everybody uses at the moment. The Cherry Committee, of which I was a member, um, refused to concede that there were these problems of external and internal radiation, and ultimately they brought legal threats against the, the, the committee members to prevent this getting discussed and uh, getting into the final report. This is quite a, quite a, a concern. Um, the senior radiation advisor to the WHO, Dr. Keith Baverstock was actually sacked for drawing attention to these issues, and I've put his report on these issues uh, along with the other paperwork that I'm sent in, sending in. And in any case, we know that the World Health Organization um, is constrained over radiation protection policy through an agreement signed with the International Atomic Energy Agency in 1959. Now, uranium exposure causes many, many illnesses and conditions. Um, I refer to a paper by Kraft. Uh, uh, and, and her colleagues, and the French Envirohome um, report of 2004. It, it, it gives you kidney accumulation and damage, brain accumulation, neurocognitive effects, cholinergic effects, cancer, chromosome aberrations, genotoxicity, heritable defects, sex ratio changes. There were sex ratio changes in uranium miners' children. As long ago as 1960, this was, this was uh, published by Muller. Uh, inhibition of wound healing, lung inflammation, fibromas, immune system damage, blood, le blood effects, leukemia, lymphoma, uh, and, and, other, and, and other effects in eyes and cardiovascular system. Uranium appears to have a powerful genotoxic effect which is associated with every single organ in which it can accumulate, which is most organs in the body. Now why is this? How can it be when this substance is so weakly radioactive? Now what I have to tell you is the kiss of death for this project, or should be, and certainly it will make this project uh, amenable to challenge uh, in, 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 in the court, and this challenge will succeed, because the cause of this anomalous uranium genotoxicity is an overlooked effect. It's an effect which is perfectly obvious on the basis of basic physics, but has been overlooked and nobody has drawn attention to it unless, uh, until recently. It's photoelectron enhancement of external natural background radiation. This effect focuses external natural background gamma radiation straight into the DNA through absorption of the energy and its re-emission as photoelectrons. This effect has now been published in the peer review literature and it's been even patented and used for cancer radiotherapy, but so far it's been entirely ignored by the risk agencies. We start with one simple fact. Absorption of gamma radiation and X radiation, that's external gamma radiation, electromagnetic radiation, is proportional to the fourth power of the atomic number of the element that we're considering. This is in all the physics textbooks, there's no problem, and in this table here you can see that I've given the fourth power compared to the absorption of water, and for uranium, which has the highest atomic number of any element on Earth, the enhancement of absorption is enormously high, and in fact this is why uranium is used as a shield. Uranium and lead, elements of high atomic number, are, are routinely used as a shield for x-rays 